Hello, my name is Father Judy Lai, and welcome to our program, Friar's Feast, the Art of Celebration, where faith, family, and food come together. Today I'm with my family, my cousins, Tina Jordan and Tom Roca, and they are accomplished home chefs. We're going to do meat curing. We're going to do pancetta and mortadella. What we have here is, is uh, uh, prosciutto from my butcher friend, Yanko, in Shoreline, Seattle, Carpataya. Wonderful butchery, artisan butchery, and artisan butchery in the home. We're going to cure meat. Stay tuned. So, Tina, what are we going to be making today? Well, we're making a sweet and sour chicken meatballs. It's a recipe from southern Italy. It has some um, Moroccan influences. We use cinnamon. We use candied lemon peel. Oh and it's a, it's a celebration dish. It's usually made for big family gatherings, particularly for the Feast of St. Joseph. Yeah. So. Okay, well, let's begin. So what we're going to get started with is we have a hot saute pan here that we're going to put just a little bit of olive oil in. And we're going to um, saute some onions up with Tom's excellent pancetta. And we're doing that just to start the base of, of flavors. And the wonderful thing about this dish is that for all intents and purposes, other than the food processor, we'll be doing all of this in a single pan. And that's always great. Um, the other thing that's great about this dish in terms of making it for family get-togethers is it's very easy to make ahead of time, and the chicken meatballs reheat very well. So we're just going to be waiting to get a little bit of color on these onions and render that fat. While this is working, I can go ahead and get started on the first set of ingredients that'll go into our food processor. So what we have here is a pound of diced chicken thighs. Uh, we use this meat because it's a little bit moister, has a slightly higher fat content, but the, the uh, flavor on it is, is very good. So we'll put that in. We have about six to seven ounces of uh, chopped spinach, frozen chopped spinach thawed and, and squeezed dry. And we'll put that into the processor as well. A little bit of garlic. This is two cloves. You can do that to taste. A little extra garlic never hurt anyone. This is cinnamon and salt and pepper. So we will be um, processing this as soon as those onions and pancetta are done getting a little bit caramelized. And we don't want to puree this. We just want to dice it. It's going to be a rough, a rough consistency. Like a rough chop then. Yes. Okay. Oh, very good. So we will be right back. Okay, go ahead. Tina, tell us. Okay, so we've gotten these onions and the pancetta to the color that we would like. We have some great fond on the bottom for our pan sauce, mm -hmm. and um, we've brought out some of the sweetness in the onion, which is what we want. Because again, this is sweet and sour chicken meatballs, so we're going to have some contrast in terms of sweetness, some vinegar we'll be adding, and we'll get a lot of layers of flavor. So we're going to go ahead and add the onions and pancetta right into this mixture in the food processor. Try as best as I can to get everything out of there. But we, you know, if there's a couple of, of uh, pieces of onion and some other things that stay, that's fine. This is all going to go into the oven when we roast these. Okay, so we're ready to process. And again, I just want to remind everyone, I'll start off with a little bit of a pulse, but we don't want to puree this. So that, that consistency looks great. We want this to be a little bit chunky, right? It's not going to be totally consistent. Part of the beauty of these meatballs is getting little surprises of the different pieces of flavor that we have. Let me get everything out of there. Everything except the blade. So now we have stage two of the ingredients that we're going to be adding. And the first thing that I'm going to do is put about a tablespoon of champagne vinegar. Um, you can use red wine vinegar. You can use white wine vinegar. 
it, whatever you have in the house. You wouldn't want something like a balsamic. You're looking for more of that acid type of taste, not a sweet taste. So the other ingredients we have here, uh, similar to what Father Jude was using in his recipe, we're going to have fresh breadcrumbs. We're going to add a little bit of, of moisture and structure. So what we have here is a half a cup of toasted almonds that we've chopped medium fine. That'll give us a little bit of a crunch. We have three ounces of grated um, Asiago Fresca. And you can also use Fontanella. What we're looking for here is a young, non-aged, moisture-rich mm -hmm. cheese yeah. that has more flavor than mozzarella. So you wouldn't want to use mozzarella. That's a little too neutral. But um, it's fairly easy in most gourmet stores to find a, a young, um, non-aged Asiago. So is the taste uh, sharp or more bland or what? It's... It <sighs> It's not sharp exactly. It's mm -hmm. not, you wouldn't think of it as a pecorino type of, yeah, pr of right. profile, sure, sure. but it, it does have more flavor than mozzarella. So I would think it's still, it's still somewhat mild. Mm -hmm. Now this may be my favorite part of the whole recipe. This is a third of a cup, somewhere between a third of a cup, two to a quarter ounces of candied lemon peel. Um, you can find this out in markets for baking purposes, mm -hmm. but I find that it's something that's a real pleasure to make at home. Uh, it's not that difficult. You take the rind off of a, a lemon, you put that in a saucepan with cold water, mm -hmm. bring that up to a boil, and uh, you drain that water to let all of the bitterness that's been leached out go sure. away. And you do that about three or four times. Then you make a simple syrup and you simmer the peels in simple syrup for about 15 right. minutes. The beauty of this is you end up with a byproduct, another artisanal byproduct is lemon syrup. <laughs> This is the result of what ends up in the, the saucepan. Really? We won't be using that in the recipe today, but you can do everything from tea to oh, cocktails yeah. to all kinds of other things. Yeah, I've made that childproof specifically so that we could keep that closed. Mm. Oh, let's see, let's see if we could do this. No, go ahead. <laughs> okay, the last, yes, exactly. The last thing that I'm going to put into the bowl before we mix this up is an egg. Childproof, huh? Okay, this is good. This is good. <laughs> Cooking with family and friends. I love it. So we're going to put this egg in, and then I'm going to take my rings off and do this with my hands. And you just get more of a consistent base with this. But also, you really don't want to overmix the meat. Mm -hmm. It'll toughen up the meatball. Um, but we do want to get everything thoroughly mixed in there. So we're just going to take a, a minute. and get everything relatively distributed. Boy, does that look good. Well, it oh, yeah. does smell. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> you can smell the, uh, mm. the almonds and the lemon peel, that uh, pancetta in there. You can smell the vinegar, too. I mean, there's a, sense, a certain sense of uh, pungency there. I like that. So, so we're going to form these into meatballs and put them back in the saute pan. Once we get these portioned out, this pan will be going into a preheated 450 degree oven. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take about 20 to 25 minutes to get these to uh, a temperature of 165. And I really would recommend using a, a thermometer. This is chicken, poultry. We want to make sure we want to get this to the correct temperature. Okay, so we're ready to put this in the oven. Okay. And maybe I could uh, get you to take out sure. our set. Look, oh, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's rinse my chicken hands. There you go. <laughs> and let me put this in the oven for you. Great. Great. Okay. drippings that we've gotten not only from roasting the chicken meatballs but also from the pancetta that we started out in the pan and make a pan sauce I'll that will oh okay. really how oh, nice so these have been checked we took these up as I said to 165 degrees and then after that uh, they're they don't have to sit in the pan but you would want them to rest a minimum of five to eight minutes before you would actually serve them and that's a great opportunity for you to make the pan sauce. Uh, as I stated earlier, you can also certainly make these ahead of time and reheat them when you're actually going to serve them or serve them cold. The flavor profiles work mm. in, in any case. Oh, how nice. And a little more. That looks lovely. Oh, they look beautiful. 
Beautiful. So something else to put the rest in the yeah, Sure. Okay, and we'll be right back. Okay, Tina. Go Great. Ahead. So uh, we've now gotten to the last stage of the recipe. We've taken all of the meatballs out of the pan that they were roasting in. I've put a little protective uh, covering over the, the handle since this is very warm. And we're going to deglaze that pan with a little bit of wine. Uh, now, you know, recipes, this calls for about a quarter of a cup. I am certainly not going to dictate to what someone at home wants to use in terms of how much wine to put in their sauce. But we want to get a little bit of a syrup, uh, syrupy consistency. And we have some great drippings in here. The color yeah. coming off of this is wonderful. So we're going to let the wine just simmer a little bit so it gets slightly syrupy. It's not going to take long. And it really is a matter of preference, right? The syrupy, we make it, you're going to get a little bit of that sweet component. But um, you could leave it on the, on the runnier side. This is just to make sure that we get all of that flavor that we've created. There's no sense in no, wasting it. No. So uh, we've let the wine simmer a little bit. And then what I have in this container here is about a half a cup of chicken broth, um, a half teaspoon of sugar, and another additional uh, tablespoon of vinegar. And again, if you wanted to make a slightly sweeter vinegar to make the pan sauce sweeter, you could do that. You could use the champagne vinegar that I used before or the red wine vinegar. It really doesn't matter. So we'll put that in. And if you can hand me my basil, mm -hmm. we're going to tear up somewhere between four and five basil leaves, depending on their size. And that'll add a little bit of freshness to the pan sauce. And um, it's certainly something that goes with the, the lemon uh, flavor quite mm -hmm. well. So we're just going to soften those basil leaves up. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to be too aggressive there. So we've got a little bit of a boil here going, which is exactly what I want to see. And I might, if I was going to be serving this later, reduce it down even more and make it a little bit thicker. But there's nothing that says that we can't use this in the state that it's in now. So uh, because we've only done a portion of the meatballs, I'm not going to pour this whole right. sauce over that. But we'll take a little bit out of what's going on in the pan. Boy, it smells wonderfully. It really does. Yeah, we've really gotten some nice, nice color. We'll do one more run of those. Roasting is also a great alternative to pan frying. Um, you could pan fry these meatballs in a little bit of olive oil. We found that the, the crust is a nice contrast, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, you still get something from oven roasting also. Sure you do. Yeah. So there's a lot of flexibility in doing these kinds of recipes to adapt them to what your preference is. But this is our sweet and sour chicken meatballs. Thank you, Tina. Wonderful. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. So, Tom, tell us what you're going to do today. Today, we're going to make pancetta. And it's, of, of the cured meats, this is probably one of the easier meats to cure and easier uh, cuts to make. And it's a, uh, it's, uh, a product that you see it all throughout different variations of different recipes throughout Italy, and every region will have its own. Mm -hmm. And this is one I've found that's really, really good. It's, uh, it's got a lot of aromatic spices in it, and, uh, and wine and garlic, oh and it's, it's wow. very easy to make. So okay, let's we'll, go. we'll do it. Okay, you, you, to cure any meat, you need salt, and um, you use about 2% of, of the weight of the meat is is salt, mm -hmm. and uh, it's sort of a rule of thumb. Is that a rule? Uh, okay. And this pink salt here is called curing salt, and that's uh, it's salt and it's pink. It's got a little nitrite in it, and that's that aids in curing. Curing means basically preserving, and um, the pink the pink salt is it all permeates the meat, and it's what makes the the pink color in the uh, and it brings the pink uh, pinkness of the meat out. So we'll put the, both salts in a bowl, and then in a spice grinder, we are going to put, um, we've got nutmeg, black peppercorns, red pepper flakes, allspice berries, 
uh, juniper berries, and whole cloves. And we're going to make a coarse grind in the spice grinder. Break that all up and mix it with our salt. Oh my heavens, it's so aromatic. Yeah. Wow. Really, those are all strong spices, and uh, and uh, and you want to mix that that pink salt in and distribute it all mm. throughout because that's that's the key. And what we'll do is take half of it and just rub it on the one side of the meat and cover it as much as we can mm -hmm. and then we'll flip it over and do the rest on the other side. So this is classical meat curing. My heavens, I've never done that before. Well, I'm glad that you're doing it. My heavens. And the, the one thing with this is it takes time. And uh, you're making a quality product, and quality will take time. Um, OK, so now we'll put it in a baggie. A zip, you can get a large Ziploc baggie. And we'll put it right in there. There we go. Spread it out. So let, the next thing that makes this really good is the money, the wine and the garlic, and that's what, the that's money, what, yeah, you, yeah, that, yeah, that's what, what you smell when when it's done and when it's drying mm -hmm. and curing, yeah. and uh, it's just a nice combination. This is a great recipe. I so this say. is, oh, yeah, yeah, it's really good. This is about five cloves of, of coarse chopped garlic, and then uh, any kind of um, dry red wine. Um, and so we're just going to put that, put about half on, on one side and spread it around. Flip it over. And do the other side. And it's okay if it's, if it's not all over because as it sits and cures, mm -hmm. it will it will permeate the whole okay. the whole piece. So then you seal it up, put it in your refrigerator for about eight days. Eight days. And uh, you flip it over every day, and you keep you keep checking it. And once it's fully cured, what the what's what it's doing is the salts permeating the 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 meat, chemically changing it and curing it. And um, once you can feel it right now, it's very squishy. Uh, once it's cured, it'll be very firm. And that's when you know, and that takes about eight days. After that, you wash it off completely. You put cracked pepper on one side, roll it up, and let it dry for about 21 days. And uh, if you have a, uh, a cool, um, somewhat humid place, a cellar, you could hang it there. If you want to do it at home, you could just put it right on a wire rack uh, in your refrigerator, open, and mm -hmm. just drape a piece of uh, plastic wrap over oh, it, really? just to keep it from drying too fast. And uh, and um, oh, and you got to tie it with a with a loop about every inch, just to right. keep it tight. And uh, and it and it comes out, it it comes out as pancetta. Well, Tom, thank you so much. It's going to be wonderful once this is done. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. So, Tom, now we make the mortadella. Tell us how we make it. Go ahead. We're making mortadella de Bologna. And it is, the uh, mortadellas, again, the different regions will have their own, but the, the most famous and uh, 
uh, the, the region that's the most proud of theirs would be the Bologna region. And uh, so this is a, a traditional mortadella de Bologna. Um, first of all, mort, we'll use the mort part of the mortadella with a mortar and a pestle. And we've got coriander, um, anise, and caraway. And we're just going to pulverize that in the, in the mortar. Okay, and this we will add to our other ingredients, which again, if you're curing some meat, if you're curing meat, you need salt, and again, the, the curing salt with nitrites in it. Uh, in addition to that, there is garlic powder, mace, and white pepper. So we're going to add all that together, and if you could mix it up, please. Mm -hmm. And mix it up real good to, to distribute that salt evenly. And this is ground pork. It is a combination of pork shoulder and the pork belly meat that we used um, for the pancetta. It's about 80-20. About and the pork belly meat gives it a nice fatty consistency. And it's been ground twice. You can go, you can get this, uh, your butcher, to, uh, to um, grind it twice for you, or you can even just buy ground pork in, in your supermarket, and it doesn't have to be ground twice, um, and you can just put it, put it right in your food processor, because what we're going to make here is a paste. So we're going to put the meat in, thank you, and we are going to put the spices in. And again, what what mm. Italian food doesn't doesn't include wine? Wine. So we're gonna put that in. Yeah. That's about about a half cup, and make a paste out of it. And it takes a while, but will eventually get very pasty. That's probably good. Okay. And you can see this is a, a meat paste. Nice and pink. It'll cook up nice and pink. We'll put this Thank you. In a bowl. Okay. And to this, we will add about a quarter cup of whole pistachios and um, black peppercorns. And what makes the mortadella look like mortadella is the little white cubes of fat. And this is back fat. And it's, and it's, a, it's a hard fat. It's from the, from the back of the pig. And it's very beautiful. And it's, and it's there for, for decoration and for flavor. And so you put that in, and then you mix it up with the pistachios and the peppercorns. And you want to distribute those, those ingredients throughout the, the meat. Okay. Okay. And then, and at this point, we're going to stuff it in a casing, and we're going to cook it. Okay, and we'll be right back. Okay, Tom, I think it's ready to stuff the mortadella.
that's wonderful. And I believe we have one right here. So, yeah. well, we'll be right back and we will plate the homemade mortadella. Stay tuned. Okay, Tom, it's, okay. it's been poached. Let's slice it and plate it. <laughs> that is flavor. You ain't just whistling Dixie. That is flavor. Oh. Put one on top there. Well, Tom, that looks absolutely. Why don't you cut cut us off a piece? I want to see oh, yeah. how that is. Try it. And you try it too, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Tom. All right. Cheers. Cheers, Montadella. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Wonderful, buddy. God love you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, this is Father Jude Eli with my cousins Tina and Tom. We had a great day making cured meat, pancetta, and mortadella. So always remember when you're feeding others, you're feeding the presence of God within them. God bless and take care. Happy family food. Oh, did it come today? Well, here we are. I didn't catch it. Did you catch it? I didn't catch it. Okay, let's try it again. See, this is why there's many tanks. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Tom, uh, what's your name? Scotty, you're right.